ages A thousand tongues are not enough but we An album like um, this Worship Duets, I think there's something interesting about um, uh, a collection of songs which have been co-written. You, you, always, you always learn something when you write with, with, with somebody else. And I think that what we've, we've got is a really interesting um, uh, kind of coalition between uh, you know, the, the old and the new. Generally speaking, when people are um, being creative uh, in various ways, it, it's, it's, it's a sign that there is an overflow, there is a, a stirring, that people are thinking, people are, 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 are using their gifts to express something that is stirring with, within them. Yeah, well, Graham's been a real father figure um, in our world for years and years. You know, he's kind of the granddaddy of worship songwriters and uh, I was 12 years old when I went to an event and I walked into this big top with this band playing. Graham was there leading, his, uh, leading the worship with his rainbow guitar strap and I just thought wow this is amazing, I'd, I'd really like to do that one day. Graham Kendrick's been a, a serious influence on our lives and the way that we craft our worship songs. Mm -hmm. We know that he's a, a great poet and that he's a, a real hymn writer for this generation. For sure. We think that Servant King is a really significant song for the church today because it says a message that really isn't out there that much. As a daily offering. We need to remember that in view of God's mercy, we need to bring our lives and we need to be servants as well. We bring our lives. I think people like me who write songs are, are always going to write songs as long as, as long as there's life and breath in us. It's a passion of mine, you know, to build content into, into song. It's a bit of a legend. Uh, he's written so many great worship songs. He is uh, highly esteemed. And we wrote a song called Saving Grace. And if you know anything about me at all, I love to sing and talk about grace. For his saving grace. He is songs like He Is Risen are the kinds of songs that I look for as a worship pastor, where they teach without sounding like they're teaching. Whereas the congregation sings them, they're getting theology, uh, they're getting an image of God and God's story locked into their mind and into their hearts. And the thing I really appreciate about Graham is his humility, his gift for words, his sense of humor, um, and I'm just honored to call him a friend. He has been a massive role model for me in terms of my own writing, in terms of understanding how to place truth in songs in a way that has dynamic power for people and really strengthens people's faith. I think Oh What A Love fits in with the direction that I've been going in lately in my songwriting um, in that I think that it's important for us to express um, intimacy alongside declaration of truth. There's some very fresh stuff in there that I don't think would have come out if I hadn't have collaborated with these, with these folks. You could just tell he's just so kingdom minded and um, he has a deep humility and it was a really honor uh, to have those, those few hours with him. What's special about this song is that um, two guys that are across the world from each other um, that are 30 years or different in age <laughs> um, came together to write that song. And I think that's special too and I think that communicates a lot of uh, a lot of what the church needs in worship today, that uh, our worship needs to be created at, from a place of family and a place of community and a place of, uh, of, of uh, diversity.
you can fill books and library shelves with the theology of, of worship. Uh, I, perhaps the, the simplest part is, you know, we love him because he first loved us. And we're just saying thank you in a, in a thousand different ways.